Hello Andy here from Cornish Motorcycle Diaries and this is going to be a comparison video between the Moto Guzzi and the BSA so let's get on with it. Okay, let's start off with looks and for both of them I'm going to give five stars because I think they look fantastic, classically styled, just as I want a motorcycle to look. Tank, wheels, engine, chrome, minus, slight minus for the BSA for the radiator and to the Guzzi for the rather clumsy instrument cluster, but overall top dollar on this one. Okay, performance wise, they're pretty much on a level plane. I think the Guzzy marginally more and a bit smoother at higher speeds. Both are adequate for motorways and so forth. I give them three stars a piece. You won't uh, do two up continental touring on them. You can, but it's going to be a little bit more involved. And um, yes, generally speaking, adequate both are characterful engines, the V twin and the single. And yes, uh, three stars a piece for these. Okay, let's talk about economy and uh, the BSA wins on this one, surprisingly. It's uh, got a smaller tank, but I think it does pretty much near to the 70 miles per gallon, about 65 to 70. Whereas the Guzzi, larger tank though it has, more than 10 litres uh, bigger, uh, tends to top out at 50 miles per gallon. So a win to the uh, BSA for economy. For me, this is the all-important factor, and this is, in my opinion, where the BSA wins out over the Guzzi. It's very well-mannered around town, the gear change is very slick and smooth, the clutch action is nice, whereas the Guzzi can be a little bit jerky and doesn't really get going until you sort of move up the rev range a little bit. Also, six-speed gearbox is a bit too much for a bike like that. I would expect it to be a little bit more talky. So overall BSA is a winner there so I give four stars to the BSA and three to the Guzzi but both are very rideable on the motorway or other high speed roads but to be honest still both better on those A and B roads where you can swing around bends but I particularly love the way the BSA comes out of corners just on the throttle especially once you've taken the baffle out. When it comes to servicing, the BSA has a fairly short service interval of only 3,500 miles. Nevertheless, um, it's a fairly simple procedure. The Guzzi is so simple that literally anybody can service it, including idiots like me. So if I can do it, anybody can. But bear in mind, that relates to a 2016 Guzzi. I would imagine that you'd want to service a brand new one at the dealer. Jury is currently out on reliability for the BSA and uh, it's a new machine, it's of Indian manufacture, so yes, some question marks, but I think the basic package is going to be reliable. It has a Rotax engine, Austrian heritage, used by BMW themselves, so yes, it's got to, got to be okay in the long run, but some queries initially. Um, the Motor Guzzi, a solid, reliable, long-lived engine. Um, a few Italian quirks though, that, that's the thing. And also, if you want to buy uh, bits for your engine, sometimes you've got to order them from Italy, which can take months. So, a bit of a question mark over both on that one. A word of warning here for both, and that uh, dealer backup isn't great for either. My local dealer for the BSA is a chap called Colin, let's say no more about that. Uh, for the Guzzi, the nearest dealer is in Exeter, 70 miles away. And if you want to get spares for the Guzzy like the paint, which is about to come up on your screen, you will find it's almost impossible to get the right paint match. Now, it was my own fault that I damaged the paint on the Guzzy's tank, but that was the one thing I think that in it damaged my sort of belief that this would be a happy relationship because I ne could never get it properly resolved. So a bit of a negative there for uh, dealer backup for both. Hopefully the BSA situation is getting better as they expand. Now, just a brief word about competitors. So for the uh, BSA, it's largely people like Royal Enfield are in the same price and performance bracket. Whereas for the Guzzi, it is upper league, so it more competes with the Triumph T100 and similar machines. So segueing from there on to cost, the uh, BSA tops out at around 7K, whereas the Guzzi is now for a new bike, 
touching 10, so quite a difference there. So on that score, I give the BSA 5 star and the Guzzi 3. And finally, we come to the heritage factor for which the Guzzi undoubtedly wins the crown, giving it 5 stars because it unbroken lineage back to the original V7, although that was a very different bike, whereas the BSA is cobbled together homage to an icon. Um, but I still love it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that run through of the two bikes. Did it answer my question at the beginning, which was, why did I change? Well, it's up to you to decide. But for me, I know that basically the answer is because I wanted to. Now, that brings up a whole lot of other things. But we as bikers sometimes do things which are not wholly rational. Don't we ever? Anyway, on that bombshell, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye for now.